Curtis Winters, and this is Improv Pathways, Lesson 1. Uh, you'll want to make sure you have your book out and your musical instrument out, ready to play, because during this video, there will be times where I will play something and you'll play it back, or there are times where you will play along with the recording, and so you need to be ready to play your instrument. Now, I want to point out that all of the recordings that are with this uh, improvisation method disc one, disc two, and there's, there's even more than that. But all these recordings can be downloaded from improvpathways.com. You click on the members tab, and then you input the password that is on page one of your book. It's on page one of your book or page uh, three of the PDF if you're using a computer screen. So you can go there anytime and download those, those tracks and you can burn them onto a disc or just use them off of your computer. So we're on page three, lesson one. And let's go ahead and talk about the vocabulary in lesson one. First of all, we have a scale. A scale, which is a set of ascending uh, and descending notes that are in a step-by-step -step pattern, okay? Like this. Go ahead and play along with me. This is the first note of the scale. Now that would be called a major scale, okay, major scale. And uh, in our jazz band, we'll call it the concert B flat major scale. Now the pattern is something that is a short melody using specific scale tones, okay? So it doesn't just go all the way up and all the way down. The pattern is something that's more melodic, okay? Like this, in your book, you'll see this. Okay, you wanna try it with me? One, two, three. One more time. Now, if you can play that easily, that means you are good at reading standard musical notation. So on this page now, you'll see several different types of musical notation besides our Western European music notation. Music notation is simply a system for representing musical sound on a page, on paper, okay, with written symbols. So you'll see the Tibetan chant notation. How's that look, huh? The Gregorian chant, this is what led into the five lines and four spaces of a statue. You'll notice Gregorian, Gregorian chant only has four lines. Then you'll see in the middle standard musical notation. Hopefully you're familiar with that. If not, it's okay. This book mostly uses scale tones, and so you don't have to read music really well to learn to improvise. You do have to read music well to play the songs that are in this book. Then you'll see some guitar tablature, or it's called tab for short. Uh, a lot of guitar players around the world learn to play guitar songs by looking at that kind of notation. And then there's the scale tone notation. Now this is something I invented, okay? It's not standard all over the world or in the, in the United States or anything. It's, but I call it scale tone notation because it shows you which note of the scale you're playing. On the scale tone notation there, you'll see one, two, three, five, six, seven, well, flat seven, six, five. Okay, now flat seven is the seventh note of the major scale but down a half step, it's flatted, okay? Um, so that uh, pattern in scale tone notation would be played like this. Okay, and that's one of the patterns you might learn later in this book. So now that we've talked about that notation, let's go ahead and get into patterns level one. Now we're gonna use scale tones one, two, and three. That's it, just three notes. So right there in the middle of the page, you'll see the three notes we're using for patterns level one. Now, if you're not sure how to figure these notes out, then you might need to talk to someone who's good at reading music uh, so you can figure out these first three notes. But it's just the first three notes of the concert B-flat scale. For trombone, it's this. That's really tricky on trombone because one, two, three is not first position, second position, third position. No, it's the first three notes of the concert B-flat major scale, which is B-flat in first position, C in sixth position, and then D in fourth position, okay? For piano, <clears throat> you'll be playing B flat C D on the, on the keyboard. For alto sax and very sax, you'll be playing G A B. So you're gonna start with three, note, three fingers down and then the two fingers and then one finger for the B. For tenor sax, you'll be playing C, middle finger C, and then D with all the fingers and the thumb, and then E with that last finger lifted. For trumpet, you'll be playing C D E, okay, open, one and three, one and two. Now, how about some instruction for the drummers here? Drummers, you're gonna play along just like everyone else in the band, but 
instead of worrying about the pitch, you're just going to worry about the rhythm, okay? So here's the most basic way for you to do the call and response. You hear this, da, do, da, you're going to play on the snare drum. Or da, do, da, tom, tom. Or thirdly, da, do, da, use the bass pedal with your right foot. Let me try another one. Da, 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 do, da. Okay, or you're just gonna play the rhythm on these three things. Now, if you wanna be extra cool, there's two things you can do to be extra, extra cool as a drummer, okay? First of all, you can, in one pattern, you can use two different drums, like, hear that? Da, 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 do, da. Okay, you can do something like that. Number two, you can keep the right cymbal quarter notes like this. Da, 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 do, da. Ooh, see how I did that? You keep the chord notes going on the right cymbal. Ding, ding, ding. While you play the rhythm with your left hand or the bass pedal. Okay, let me try that again. Da, 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 do, da. Ooh, how did I do? That's kind of tricky. It's kind of hard to do. I hope you can do it on your first try. If so, you're awesome. If not, keep practicing until you can. For guitar, uh, you'll, you'll see on guitar the, the notes written out on the strings. And that brings me to the at a glance fingering charts. At the end of the book, you'll see a whole page of at a glance fingering charts. Now you don't have to use these, but for some of you, it'll be really helpful to see which notes you're playing on your instrument. Some of you will look at these and say, that doesn't make any sense. I'm just going to read the notes off of the staff, the treble clef and bass clef. And that's fine, whatever you prefer, okay? But you can use those if you want to. And for guitar players and bass players in particular, the at a glance fingering charts will be very, very helpful because it not only shows you which string and which fret you play, but it also shows you which finger is recommended that you use to play each note of, of the patterns and each note of the scale. So get ready to play those first three notes and uh, you're going to hear it played and then you're going to play it back. Now your teacher may prefer to have you listen and sing, listen, sing, and then listen, play, listen, play. Each pattern will be played four times. Uh, you'll hear it sung twice and played twice. You can, uh, so you can do singing and playing, or I just have my students go ahead and play it all four times. So, but they get to hear it twice with the voice, da, do, wa, and then they get to hear it twice played with an instrument, okay? So get ready to play, and here is patterns number one. I hope you can figure this out. I hope you can hear and play the notes that you hear. Now, if you can't figure out these notes just by listening and then figure them out on your instrument, then you can turn to page 27, and you'll see there each of the patterns that are going to be played, um, and you'll, it'll show them in scale tone notation. So it'll say, for example, one, two, three, then you know kind of what to expect. First note, second note of the scale, third note of the scale. So I'll give you time to flip there if you want to look at page 27 right now. Um, and here is patterns level one. Ready, here we go. Listen first. Da do a. Da do a.
Now it's okay if you didn't get every pattern on your first try. The point is you're going to practice this over and over again. Do it two or three times a day and do it again on the next day and on the next day. And eventually you will memorize these patterns. Not so much in your head, you'll memorize them here with your fingers, okay? And that's the point is to memorize these patterns, to internalize them, to get perfect muscle memory of these patterns. And then anytime you think of these patterns in your head, you're like, I want to play da do ba do that, then you can play it da do da do that because it's it's in your muscle memory. Your brain can reproduce it without even thinking at all automatically. So let's go to the bottom of the page now where we're going to talk about uh, one of the strategies for improvising. This is number one, musical conversation. Now when you're talking to a friend, you just say the things that come to your mind. You don't read a script. You don't read off of a page. You just say the things that come into your mind. It's a conversation. So we're going to see if we can have a musical conversation now with our instruments instead of with our voices. Because improvising on your instrument should be like just having a conversation. Now, if you're in a classroom setting, then you can stop the video here and your teacher can divide you up into pairs, two of you together, and one of you will play something. Just use these three notes, that's it. We're only gonna use three notes. And you can have a conversation. Uh, one person plays something like, and then the other person plays something like, okay, and you're just gonna go back and forth. Just use those three notes and just talk with music. Just say something with you know with these three notes so first you're going to do just the first note of the scale and then you're gonna after you've done that for a while you're gonna go ahead and do scale tone three instead so we got one and then three and then you're gonna have a conversation using all three notes if you're at home alone then i'm gonna play cd one track one and you can have a conversation with the recording so this is it for lesson one here we go with the recording or have a good time talking with other people in your class Improvising Pathway 1, Musical Conversation. When you're talking to a friend, you simply say the things that come into your head. You don't read a script or give a memorized speech. Improvising on your instrument should be like talking in a conversation. So I'll ask you some questions and you'll answer with scale tone 1. For example, I might ask, what is your name? And you'll answer, my name is Joe. <laughs> so get scale tone 1 ready and here we go. What is your name? Ah, what did you uh, have for breakfast this morning? So, uh, do you have any pets? Tell me a little bit about your pets. And uh, what's the best thing you did last summer? So now we'll use skill tone three to have a conversation. So now you just have to guess what I'm saying. Here we go. Okay, that gets boring pretty quickly. Let's try having a conversation now with skill tones one, two, and three. And this ends improvising pathway one.